Hey guys, so I kept in contact with two of the consignors that had watches at Alpha Crown and they have not been reimbursed yet. One of them was told that something would happen on Friday. The other one called and again, no response, right? It's really hard to get a hold of these insurance people. So basically they're being told he was told, hey, this is the insurance guy. You contact him. You do our jobs for us, right? Now, the Alpha Crown video has been deleted. And the video was titled Addressing Rumors or something like that. And the video has been deleted because basically it was suggested that things would get resolved very soon. And at the end of their video, I, I did watch the video, there was the discussion of our conversation. Uh, I didn't record the conversation. They, you know, I said, I'm not recording. You guys can record. I don't care. But my memory of the conversation is very, very strong because in the conversation, I mentioned that, yes, I made videos about you. I understand you don't like those videos and you don't like to be associated with Anthony. No, I don't think you are Anthony, but there is a problem. I'm being contacted by multiple individuals at that point in time and even today. I've been in contact with two of the most vocal of the bunch, um, one on LinkedIn and one via text message today. Um, I think this is a bad look. And I think they're trying to hide it. Uh, they're deleting videos, which I don't know what is a clearer indicator by gray market people that something is really rotten. Uh, then they'd start deleting their own videos. Paul Forbes deleting any video he has with Anthony, right? Love deleting videos. Roman Scharf deleting videos with Avi as this AD, you know, renegade and AD, right? Love deleting videos. Anthony Farrar, his entire channel is deleted now. Grand Caliber deleted all the OTPG videos. I mean, at some point in time, you know, it, it's it's a commonality between these gray watch market dealers. They love deleting videos. They just love it so much. And it's not a good indicator. It's not an indicator of transparency, trust, reliability, any of this stuff that you're deleting the video because something you said on the video is no longer true today. Maybe a promise, maybe a guarantee. Maybe two months ago when you were making the video, right? And you were explaining about business and you know how business works. I own a business. I, I had that conversation with them. And that's why I gave him, in my opinion, a lot of leniency. And, uh, yeah, I, I get it, man. You got hit by a robbery. You weren't expecting it. Get your shit together and pay people. That was my question. I was my answer to them that it would be great if they paid people. Payment plan loans, borrowing money from Grand Caliber, right? Who was there after the robbery. Not showing the luck. And actually, I told him about this, that when you are displaying, a, what's upsetting the consigners is when you're displaying a luxury lifestyle, but they're not getting paid. When you're, you're making videos of you looking at new real estate, which obviously comes with money, right? It's not cheap. And there's no talk about paying them and you're giving them the the insurance provider it doesn't make any sense right look i'm just going to spit some truth right I, i'm going to spit some truth when you run a business okay and your business is consignment your business is 100 percent validated on trust in who you are you guys have understand this because you had a slogan by the dealer, right? By the dealer. Consignment is not a con. You've made videos about it. You held signs about not wearing consignment pieces by the dealer. When shit hits the fan, I want to know my dealer will take care of me. I want to know that 
they will dig into their pockets. There's no more Christmas gifts. There's no more New Year's gifts. There's no Cartier bracelets for their wife. <coughs> until people are paid. Or are in some type of payment plan. This happened five months ago. Five months ago. And I feel bad for them. But I feel worse for the consigners. And and this is a game about trust. And I do not trust a single one of them. The great market dealers on consignment specifically. I mean, do you know Anthony Farrar sitting in jail right now? What is the difference, right? One person was robbed. One person intended to rob, right? That's the difference. But what's the end result? The end result is none of these consigners have caught a penny hit. Anthony's consigners have not received any money yet. And the Alpha Crown consigners, to my knowledge, from the people who have contacted me, including today... Uh, today is Thursday, January 25th. I've been in touch with a individual on LinkedIn, and I put him in contact with an individual that text messaged me and called uh, yesterday. Guys, if your business has any hope of survival, you got to pay these guys out. I'm telling you from a marketing perspective. I'm telling you straight up. I'm giving you the best marketing advice I can give you. You gotta pay these guys out. The consignees need to be paid out from your pockets. I know this is very hard to hear. I know that's not what you want to hear. But you got to pay them. It's been long enough. It's been five months. It's been five months. You made a video about it. We talked about it. You knew my videos were coming. You knew, you knew they were coming. I told you straight up. And you even mentioned in the video that was deleted that after a certain time period, if the consigners continue to contact me, and I think the one in Tennessee, I, I actually, this was the first time contacting me. The one that you mentioned in our conversation, um, the one that has the lawyer, has had the lawyer from the very beginning, he contacted me too via email. Like they've all, I've been contacted by... I would imagine a large majority, and I've seen paperwork, I've seen what watches, I, I've seen it all, right? I just have done you the court courtesy to get your shit together, and you have not, in my opinion, got your shit together, because there's no payment plans, there's a... you cannot, you can blame Wolves, Wolverine, right? You can bring, blame them, hey, they're spiting us, okay. You can blame your insurance company. Hey, it's my insurance company. But at the end of the day, the buck stops with you. Right? The buck stops with you. And you can't operate a business this way. There are plenty of times that I... Uh, let me tell you one time. Very early on in my marketing career, we had to build this app. It was a... Uh, we under... We... We... Uh, Pitched for it. it we, we undervalued how difficult it would be. We spent four months building the app. Couldn't do it. We refunded every single dollar. We refunded every single dollar. To the penny. And we gave them like the name of a company that could actually do it. And we gave turn over all the assets. Graphic design, content. All the things that we actually produced that were valuable. We didn't charge them for it. We had four clients at that time. That was our biggest client. I paid out of my own pockets my employee salaries. I didn't take a salary for two years in that company, my marketing agency, because I knew that was my responsibility. I promised something I could not deliver, and I had to make the refund. I could have said, you know what, we tried our best, but you know, we couldn't do it. No. I told them, I went to them and said, you know what, I think at this point in time, this is the furthest we can go on this project with you. Here's a check for every invoice. You know, I had it systematic. I had every invoice uh, in an email and then a check for the total and then a, a final page with the total amount 
We sent him a check for $30,000. That's a lot of money for a small company. That was out of my pockets. Not my employees, not my insurance company, not anyone's, because it was my fault. I own the business. The buck stops with me. If I promise a customer something and I cannot deliver it, I'm going to make sure they get what they want. But I'm also going to make sure that they understand it's my fault that I overestimated our capabilities. Uh, the one thing that we couldn't do was a uh, program called Daylight. Um, and we just couldn't find a developer to do it. And we couldn't learn it fast enough that would make sense to do it, learn it. That's business. No, we don't have many clients. Uh, we actually only have four clients right now. Um, we're a small little agency. We don't make that much money. I didn't get paid. I wasn't driving no Bentley or, you know, like giving my wife a car day or something like that. I ate ramen noodles, man, until I could afford to, to not. It sucked. But that's what a business does. Because when you're the owner of the business, insurance is not paying out. You got a problem with your old business partners. The consigner does not care. You made them a promise. You're either going to keep it or not. There's two types of businesses.